Hi, my name is Brendan Manning. I'm a professor at Harvard University and coming to you today from Boston. I'd say I'm going to talk about the TSC mTOR pathway and how it controls cell growth and how our knowledge of this pathway has led to a variety of different therapeutic strategies uh, for the treatment of tuberous sclerosis complex. So uh, the TSC mTOR pathway is pictured here in a very simplified version. Um, the TSC protein complex, which is the, the protein complex that's disrupted in tuberous sclerosis, is comprised of these three proteins. And most commonly, TSC is caused by mutations in TSC1 or TSC2. Um, this disruption of the TSC complex leads to activation of the mTOR protein, which drives cell growth and is really a master regulator of cell growth. So I wanna talk a little bit about cell growth at the beginning of this, this lecture here. So cell growth is a fundamental process that every cell in our body does. Uh, and all the cells in our body really undergo a similar process where they have to basically double in size. So this is the growth phase of cell division. They double in size so that when they divide to make two cells, uh, you get two cells of equal size. So if you, if you divided without growing, you would obviously get smaller cells with each cellular division. So cells must grow first in order to then divide. Um, and this process it, it, at its bare essence is really uh, the, the creation of bigger cells and biomass through the use of building materials. Uh, and in, in case of cell growth, those building materials are in the form of nutrients. Those nu nutrients are converted through metabolic pathways, uh, collectively referred to as anabolic metabolism, to produce the biomass that creates bigger cells. So this is highly reminiscent of uh, the use of building materials to build a new house. So a variety of different building materials are needed to build a house and you require specialist, specialist contractors, uh, a roofer to put on the roof, a landscaper to do the lawn and so on, um, in order to build the house. And in most cases, if you're gonna build a new house, you will hire a general contractor who can coordinate the efforts of these specialists. Um, so it, when you're building a new cell or a bigger cell, rather than using specialists uh, to build those houses and a general contractor, you use metabolic pathways. And those metabolic pathways are the ones that convert those nutrients into the mass that's required uh, for a cell to grow. Uh, and so where mTOR comes into play here is, is mTOR really coordinates this entire process. It can tell when you have enough building materials and it can coordinate these metabolic pathways uh, generally in order to, uh, to uh, control cell growth in, in a very systematic way. In that way, you can think of mTOR as kind of the, the general contractor of the cell. It's coordinating the use of the building blocks by these different metabolic pathways to build a bigger cell. And what the TSC complex does is put a break on, on mTOR. It prevents mTOR from doing this unless the cell receives a growth signal that inhibits the TSC complex in order to activate mTOR and tell it to build cells through these metabolic pathways. So, uh, th so what happens when you lose the TSC complex in tumor sclerosis complex is you get uncontrolled growth. You get uncontrolled activation of these metabolic pathways downstream of mTOR leading to uncontrolled cell growth. So growth even in the absence of a growth signal uh, received by the TSC complex because the TSC complex is disrupted. So one way that we, that we uh, being uh, the, the TSC research field has come up with to overcome this effect is by treating with mTOR inhibitors and kind of the classic mTOR inhibitors are uh, rapamycin analogs. Uh, collectively referred to as rapalogs. So rapamycin has many different names. You may have heard of it as serolimus or rapamune or everolimus or, or, or some other uh, uh, thing, but they all basically do the same thing. They bind to and inhibit mTOR. And by doing so, dampens this anabolic program, decreases these, these, uh, these metabolic pathways ultimately leading to the, to the uh, slowing of cell growth. 
This is really equivalent to uh, uh, firing the general contractor. So if you fire the general contractor, all of the specialists will stop working and the construction of the new house, new house will be halted. So construction will be halted. This is really reminiscent of what we see when we treat uh, cells uh, or, or it, both in culture or in, uh, in, in clinical models or preclinical models or in tuberous sclerosis patients. This is all really what we see when we treat uh, cells with mTOR inhibitors. You've basically fired the cellular, the cellular con general contractor and you've halted construction on the tumors that occur in TSC patients. Um, this can be seen in a variety of different clinical trials with rapamycin analogs. Um, very reproducibly, what happens is uh, you not only halt uh, uh, tumor growth, in this case, this is a, a paper from John Bissler and colleagues uh, uh, from, from back in 2008, looking at growth of angiomyelopomas. And what you can see that during the treatment phase of this trial, uh, almost all of the tumors shrank in size and then kind of plateaued. So it's basically not only halting tumor growth, but, but preventing them from growing further and, and shrinking them. But what happens when you remove the drug is that the tumors grow back immediately. So uh, the, the rapamycin and rapalogs are very effective at treating uh, tuberous sclerosis complex tumors but they're also rapidly reversible. When, you're, when you stop the treatment, the tumors come right back. This has been seen in, in, in many different trials. I'll, I'll show one other example here. This is an example from a, a paper from David Franz and colleagues uh, from back from in 2006, this time looking at, at SEGAs in, TSC, uh, TSC, in a TSC patient. patient. If you treat uh, the patient with rapamycin, the tumor uh, really has a remarkable response and shrinks. However, if you stop the treatment, the tumor really comes back to its original size. And this is really occurring uh, it, after just about four months of age. So again, rapalogs are highly effective at treating and controlling, uh, especially tumors in tuberous sclerosis, uh, but they're also rapidly reversible if you come off treatment. So this is really, uh, uh, you know, made us think about other treatment options and treatment therapies, uh, tre uh, other therapeutic strategies for tuberous sclerosis. So again, if we come back to our general contractor analogy, uh, here we have a more competent uh, general contractor overseeing uh, the, the work of the specialists uh, to build the new house. If we, instead of firing the general contractor, which is the equivalent of treating with an mTOR uh, inhibitor, we fire just one of the contractors without telling the other contractors. So we, 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 we fire one of the specialists while all the other specialists keep working. For instance, we, we fire just the carpenter, but the roofer keeps putting the roof on and, and everything else keeps working around. Uh, but we've, we've, we've now removed the person who is building something as important as the walls of this house. What happens is we'll get structural imbalance and the house will collapse. Right? So you won't get a new healthy house, you'll get structural imbalance and the house will collapse. And it's actually, this is, is what we want to do in tuberous sclerosis tumors. We not only want to halt the, the growth of these tumors, we want the tumors to collapse and we want them to go away and we want them to go away permanently. So the strategy that we've taken is rather than inhibiting mTOR itself, we take out one of the metabolic pathways in, with, a, with a precision therapeutic that uh, mTOR controls while leaving all of the other pathways in the fully active state that you get when you lose mTOR. And what happens in this case, if you take away just one of these pathways while leaving them all, all the other ones on, is you get a state of metabolic imbalance in the cell that ultimately leads to the demise of those cells and TSC cell death. And again, this is what we wanna see in TSC tumors. We wanna kill tumor cells so that they, that they go away permanently. So just, I just wanna show you one piece of data from our lab that shows uh, this, uh, this exact scenario um, in practice. Here, uh, we're looking at normal cells on the top 
um, and uh, and TSC a TSC cell model on the bottom here. Um, we've either treated it with uh, a control treatment or we've treated it with a very specific metabolic pathway inhibitor that, that inhibits one of the metabolic pathways, but not all of them, inhibits just one of the metabolic pathways downstream of mTOR. And what we see is a selective killing of these cells. These cells are dying, these cells are still healthy. We never see this when we treat these cells with rapamycin, they just slow their growth and they get smaller. They don't actually go away like we're seeing here. We can also see this in preclinical models of tuberous sclerosis. Um, here is a kidney tumor model of tuberous sclerosis. We see that when we treat with the same inhibitor, uh, we really uh, destroy the, the cells within the tumor um, and the, the tumor uh, really hollows out and, and you're, getting, you're getting tumor cell death that, you, that, that uh, is, is not otherwise seen in, in this model. So uh, I just want to point out that, that this study was funded by the Tuber Sclerosis Alliance uh, uh, through a Rothbard Courage Fund, and, uh, and, and at least some of this work has been published in a couple of manuscripts over the last few years. So this is one of the things I talked about in the scientific session. And I just want to end by showing a picture of my lab uh, here in, in New England. Uh, we're, we're, up here, we're up in New Hampshire at our lab retreat. And, um, uh, this is a remarkable group of, of individuals, and they all are quite dedicated to the study of tuberous sclerosis and mTOR signaling. So I'm, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have.